Hello, I'm Pastor Krause coming to you from Christ Lutheran Church in Pewaukee, Wisconsin. We also have satellites in Wauwatosa down on 112th Street and also a satellite up close to Holy Hill in the town of Aaron. Now I'm glad to bring you the word of our Lord today. I'm going to give to you a more obscure section of the word. It's taken from the prophet Ezekiel. We're going to be looking at chapter 36 beginning with verse 22 and going on to verse 27. So we hear from the prophet Ezekiel. Therefore say to the Israelites, this is what the sovereign Lord says, it is not for your sake, people of Israel, that I am going to do these things, but for the sake of my holy name, which you have profaned among the nations where you have gone. I will show the holiness of my great name, which has been profaned among the nations. The name you have profaned among them, then the nations will know that I am the Lord, declares the Sovereign Lord, when I am proved holy through you before their eyes. For I will take you out of the nations. I will gather you from all the countries and bring you back into your own land. I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you will be clean. I will cleanse you from all your impurities and from all your idols. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. Holiness. Holiness is a word that is repeated here in various forms in all sorts of different ways. And that's a central theme to the Old Testament. Our God is holy. Well, we think about holiness and we go, well, he's without sin. That's true. But he's also, because he is holy, completely different and you might say uh, foreign to us. We're sinners. God is holy. Jesus was holy. We speak about the holy, precious God uh, that we have in Jesus Christ. His holy, precious blood was shed for us. Holiness. One of the reasons Jesus was hated so much, obviously, was because he was holy. We're sinful human beings, and we're uncomfortable with somebody who is, in our minds, holy. Years ago, I had a college student when I was uh, teaching uh, religion courses as an adjunct professor. And uh, this woman uh, that I had in class was very, very intelligent. She was sort of head and shoulders above other people in the class. She excelled. But then after a while, I noticed that her grades began to sink down. She wasn't failing or anything like that, but she was starting to get B's. And eventually I spoke to her and said, you know, what's happening? You have uh, so many abilities and you're so focused and uh, you can do such great work, but you're falling away from those grades. You're falling away from those heights. And she went on and told me this as a pastor that uh, she went to that school, not just to get an education, but God willing to find a mate, uh, to find somebody she could share her life with, to uh, interact there with the people in that place, and to find, God willing, the man who would be right for her for the rest of her life. And she said that when she so excelled at her grades, the other students saw it, and they didn't like it. <laughs> in fact, they rather hated her because she was different, because she was doing so well, and they were not. And so she started to slide. She started to slide so that she would fit in, get along with the other students, and still meet that guy that she was hoping to meet. <laughs> well, I'll tell you something. People are uncomfortable with holiness. We are uncomfortable too, when we look at the life of Jesus, he was so holy and we are not. But the good news is, we speak about as the great exchange, that uh, the holiness of Jesus was given to us. Our sinfulness was laid upon Jesus and we receive his holiness. What an exchange. <laughs> Boy, that's great for us, is it not? We receive the holiness of our God. 
Now we think about our sins, and some of our sins are like uh, crimson. They're the deep, dark red on a beautiful white tablecloth or piece of linen. And yet we are told, even though our sins are like crimson, they shall be as wool. They shall be as white as snow, such as the forgiveness that Jesus comes and brings to us. So that in the end, we are not just sinful human beings, but in exchange for that sinfulness, we wear the holy righteousness of Jesus Christ. His holiness given to us, our sinfulness given to him. Praise God. He has made us holy. Amen.